Welcome to the Daily Brief, where we'll go over the action in the market for Wednesday, March 22nd, and then we'll see how things look for Thursday, March 23rd. We have shifted back more negative now. There was a negative reaction to the Fed coming out and raising interest rates 25 basis points, and then the press conference that took place after that. In addition to that, there were some comments made by Treasury Secretary Janet Yellen that really has the market kind of uneasy right now, and we saw prices really decline after that. We had been turning more positive in the short term. Well, now we're shifting back to negative. The intermediate term, which had been showing some improvement, is now shifting back negative as well. The one consolation is that we had lower than average volume in Wednesday's session. That could be positive. There's still some positive backdrops that are developing. Things could turn around, but we're going to have to see some real follow through based on price. Another bit of housekeeping just before we get started. The supplemental video will be merged into other videos. I have some Isabel Net charts that I'll show you later on instead of making a separate video. And then from April 22nd through May 11th, I will be traveling. I intend to post daily videos that day. I'll do the best that I can with not only the daily videos, but any additional videos that are posted. Before Wednesday session, I had some real trouble uploading the video to Rumble. It took many hours and multiple tries to do that. It finally uploaded and is available for viewing, but it's not as timely as I'd like it to be. I try to keep right on top of that to make sure that things are uploaded to YouTube and Rumble in a timely manner. But there was some kind of an issue with their servers being able to format the video to be able to be displayed on Rumble. Let's hope that that situation has now passed. All right, let's go back and talk about what happened. Right at the open, we had a flat open. Prices went sideways and slightly negative before the Fed announcement. It was really quiet. We just chopped along sideways. As the day went on, there was this initial reaction to the raising of interest rates. That was positive, and prices went all the way up to R2 at 4032 then we started a negative reaction, which took prices back down to the unchanged level, down to S1 at 39.80, down to S2 at 39.56. Prices closed right at the low for the day and were slightly above the 200-day simple moving average, which is now at 39.34. We were down 1.65% on below average volume, which could be positive since we saw a down day with a decrease in volume. The technicals are shifting back more to negative because of this inflation and interest rate scenario and the Fed coming out and doing all their changes. And there's also this banking situation that's going on behind the scenes that's also adding a lot of instability to the market. Here is the intraday chart showing how we just had a flat open, a little bit above unchanged, a little bit below. We drifted lower. Then we had the Fed announcement. Things shot up to R2. Then the press conference started. We came back down, went negative, and then fell all the way down just above the 200-day simple moving average. Here's a one-minute chart showing the intraday action where things were pretty quiet before the announcement. Right at 2 p.m., we shot all around the place, went up, then came back down as the press conference started. Tried to rebound a little bit from that, but then ended up taking off and going much lower and closing right at the low. Here's the look at the value and growth chart, showing how they were both down on the day. Here's the closing values, showing the growth did a little bit better than value in the large caps, the mid caps, and slightly did a little worse with the small caps. Here's the intraday chart showing how things were pretty much flat until the announcement came out. Then we shot down negative and now we're drifting sideways in the overnight market. What are some comments that we can make? The S&P closed just slightly above its 200-day simple moving average. That can be taken as positive. The Fed came out and they unanimously voted to raise the target rate by 25 basis points. Now we're at 4 and 3 quarters percent up to 5 percent. The Fed's median terminal rate remains at 5.10 percent. And the fact that this has stayed the same may indicate that there could be a pause soon. That's the positive side that the market picked up on. Things turned negative as Fed Chair Powell spoke, where he acknowledged that the Fed does not see cutting rates this year and that there's also a belief that the recent banking problems do not help for a soft landing to occur. This idea that the Fed keeps raising rates until it breaks something, well now something is broke and that could send things into a more negative environment. During his press conference, Mr. Powell did not sound too hawkish or dovish, but he really didn't sound very confident either. And the markets didn't like that very much. In addition to that, this is where Treasury Secretary Janie Ellen came out with her angelic sweet voice 
and said, I have not considered or discussed anything having to do with blanket insurance or guarantees of deposits. The day before, she came out and said, let me be clear, the government's recent actions have demonstrated our resolute commitment to take the necessary steps to ensure that depositor savings and the banking system remain safe. She also declared that the situation is stabilizing and that the U.S. banking system remains sound. This was intended to add stability to the markets, but the way she said it and how it was phrased made things very destabilizing and that caused a lot of uncertainty in the market. Also on the day, the dollar was down, which is kind of strange. Usually when they raise interest rates, the dollar goes up because it costs more to get them and interest rates were down. We're seeing a little bit of this flight to safety again as people are getting out of stocks, getting into bonds, pushing bond prices up, which are pushing interest rates down. The 30 to the 5 is still maintaining a normal type of yield curve where all of our other yield curves remain inverted. Sentiment is negative. It ticked down just a little bit to 37 where it had been at 38. Our trend is now switched back to negative. It's weakening because we're below 20, because it's below the moving average. Our bias is negative and our momentum is now negative. Here's a chart put out by Edward Yardeni. It says, according to the FDIC, $7.4 trillion of deposits are insured up to 250000 while $10.5 trillion are uninsured. And that's kind of a little scary because people are putting money into this bank. And if the bank goes under, they don't get that money back. Well, now the Fed and the Treasury are coming out saying, don't worry about that. We got you covered anyway. Well, if we see a real problem going through the banking community, and this goes nationwide beyond the banks that it's already hit, that's going to make this massive program overwhelmed and could really lead to some significant problems. Then on a more commentary basis, he came out in the same email and said, Yellen and Powell need to get their acts together. They both claim that the banking system remains sound. They both want to protect depositors during the current banking crisis. Neither is in a position to provide insurance coverage to all depositors. That takes an act of Congress. So they are trying to convince the public that they can keep their banks safe by providing access to additional sources of liquidity, which perversely raises doubts about the soundness of the banking system. And this is how the market interpreted things and then ended up taking them lower. Then looking at the economic reports that came out, we had the weekly MBA mortgage application index. It came in at being up 3%. Refinancing applications were up 5% and purchase applications were up 2%. Here's some Isabel Net charts. The purple line here is the S&P 500. This gold line is the truck tonnage index, which comes out about once a month. We tend to see an overall correlation between the two, but right now there's a pretty wide spread between them. If this is going back up, that tends to be more positive for the economy. If this is going down, that's more negative. So even though there's a high spread, the truck tonnage is still continuing to advance. Here's another chart saying positioning in equities, on the other hand, had been close to neutral before the banking shock. We were up right around the zero level with these problems that have come in with the banking system. We've now dropped back down and folks are more negative in their positioning. This is put out by Goldman Sachs where they say we expect the FOMC to resume hiking in May, June, and July, but a wider range of potential near-term paths now look possible. This shows what the Fed has already done and what they're likely to do going forward. And these change every day. And just because they come up with this prediction right now doesn't mean it's going to be applicable the closer we get to the next meeting. They also predicted right here that the Fed would leave rates unchanged where they actually raised them 25 basis points. So this prediction is already faulty. This shows that different investors' perception of risks worsened this month as the banking crisis started to take hold. This stability indicator really started to go down where they're seeing a real increase in risk. This chart just talks about a systematic credit event which overtakes inflation stays high as the biggest risk. Right now, this dark blue line, this says most people are worried about the banking situation. They're still concerned about inflation, but it's really dropped. Pretty much the same about whether the central banks will stay hawkish or not. The geopolitical events have lessened just a little bit. That there'll be a deep global recession, that's also lessened. It's also a bit of an increase of a stock market crash. There was some concern over the weekend, last weekend, after the banking thing was playing out and there was some maneuvering going on over the weekend that there might be some kind of a downturn in the market. It didn't really happen that way, but I heard a few people talking like that saying, uh-oh, here we go, Monday's going to be terrible. 
Well, Monday came and went, it wasn't any kind of a crash situation. This is a historical chart that typically the Fed will cut rates in response to either a recession or a crisis. We're waiting to see if that will happen right now. It didn't happen at this meeting. We'll have to see if it happens going forward. This chart suggests that there's growing conviction on a steeper yield curve over the next 12 months. And we're seeing that. The yield curve has been inverted in all the different charts that we look at for quite some time. And parts of it are even getting steeper and steeper. This chart is similar to the other chart showing that risk appetite has really been decreasing as we've seen a lot more fear coming into the market. Looking at the ulcer index, we're still above the moving average here, suggesting that fear remains fairly high. It did tick up with the line chart and on the bar chart as well after it had been falling. This chart shows how volatility has just picked up again slightly. Here's the equity put call ratio. This is a positive backdrop where we spiked above 0.8 and now we're continuing to come down. This often gives some pretty good support to the S&P 500, but we'll have to see follow through with price. Here's another fear gauge, how we ticked up slightly in Wednesday's session and another fear gauge that also ticked up slightly. On a one day basis, we probably overdid it. When you look at the advanced decline ratio, we went extreme negative. And here's the ADX showing the condition of our trend. We had crossed over positive after Tuesday. Well now after Wednesday, the red line is back on top. The ADX is below 20 and declining below the moving average. So we are trendless, but if we default to anything, it would be to the negative trend. Here's the daily chart. We're still maintaining price above the 200 day moving average and we're still above this downward sloping trend line. Here's a two year look at that same chart showing that so far support has been holding. Down at the bottom, you can see where volume dropped off in Wednesday's session. The Arun, we're not seeing any change right now. After coming off an extreme negative reading, it's been going flat. The short-term stochastics are starting to turn negative. They're dropping below the midpoint, where the intermediate term is still advancing, and we're still seeing some advancing with the long-term stochastic. The force index is now dropped below zero, so that's negative in the short term. The Stoke RSI, after going extreme positive, has now dropped back down. After getting back above the midpoint with our Keltner bands that are placed at 1, 2, and 3 standard deviations, we're now starting to fall back down below the midpoint. And on this chart, we had been able to get above the 20 period moving averages that are plotted here, but now we've fallen back below, so that's more negative in the short term. Here's the 50 period moving average where we were right in between the exponential and simple moving average. Now we've dropped back down below both. In our 100 period moving average where we had been above it, we've now dropped back down below both moving averages. And we're now coming to the underside of the moving average tree right at the 200 day simple moving average. Swell and trending oscillator had been more positive, but now it's starting to turn over based on price and volume. We're kind of seeing a mixed bag with our oscillators. The slope is still positive. The TSI is still positive, so short term the oscillators are still positive. The MACD has crossed over positive. The PMO is trying to turn up. The PPO has already turned up. Then our longer term oscillators are trying to turn up with the tricks as well as the KST. So we're getting a mixed bag currently. The parabolic SAR still remains positive. The dot is below and the chicken oscillator is showing some weakness after getting above this zero dashed line and suggesting that things were turning more positive, well now it's starting to turn down. The vortex is just barely positive even though the green line is declining. It hasn't crossed back below the red line at least yet. Our Ichimoku cloud, after coming up into the green part of the cloud, it's now falling back down. So, so far resistance has held. The PMO, trying to turn back up here, we're just about ready to cross based on price. Still a little bit far away, but also not far behind based on volume. Looking at our PMO study, we are declining with the PMOs that are rising. We've turned down slightly with the buy signals and we continue to decline with the PMOs that are above zero. The BPI, which came out of extreme negative territory, is still continue to advance slightly. So that could be taken as positive. Our broader measure of the bullish percent index showed that it did turn up slightly. So that can also be taken as positive. The chicken money flow showing some weakness, but is still positive overall. Balance of power, we're still above the dashed line even though we did decline. TTM squeeze, still showing some lighter shade of red bars here. If we can cross back above this midpoint and turn blue, that would be more positive. The go, no go system still remains neutral. Looking at our double and triple exponential moving averages, we were able to climb above the 50. Well, now we've fallen back below that. If we continue to fall, we're looking at support at about the 3071 level to the downside. If we start screaming to the upside, we're looking at resistance at the 4075 level. 
and we're right about on top of the 200-day simple moving average. Looking at our short-term FIB chart, after coming up to the 4,000 level, we've now fallen back. If we continue to fall, we have some support at about the 3906 level. In our longer-term FIB chart, after coming up above 4,000, we've now fallen back and we're back into no man's land. And then our longer-term FIB chart, and we still have some more support at the 3826 level. This can be taken as positive as well. The S&P 500 is outperforming the S&P 500 equal weight. That just shows that the big stocks are doing better than the smaller stocks. And the bigger stocks are where we really get our growth from. The elder impulse system for the S&P is now switched to negative with a red bar. The McClellan oscillator after coming above zero has now dropped back below zero. That's negative. And our broader measure of the McClellan Oscillator is also turning down below zero. That's negative. The summation index based on price and volume, we're trying to turn back up. But with the down day, they've now turned back down. New highs, new lows are still showing some weakness overall. Even though there's some improvement here in our five period, we're pretty much flat on the 10 period moving average. With our advanced decline line, we're showing some improvement getting above this moving average, but now we've dropped below that and we're still showing some weakness based on volume. The advanced decline ratio is still below zero and declining, so that's negative. Accumulation distribution remains positive even though it's showing some weakness. We're still above this upward sloping moving average. Volume did really drop off in Wednesday's session. And the financial sector, which had just been getting hammered, bounced a little bit on Tuesday only to start falling back on Wednesday. The bank ETF was down over 5%. The regional bank ETF was down almost 6%. And the other regional banking ETF was down over 5.5%. And the ratio between the regional banking ETF and the financial sector is also showing some more weakness. And First Republic Bank, which is just bouncing all over the place, it was down almost 15.5%, so it's now closed at 13 and a third. The Dow has fallen back below its 200-day moving average, and we closed below this S1 support level. The diamonds have turned to negative in the short term. The NASDAQ, after giving us a recent golden cross, has now come back down to the pivot. And the NASDAQ 100, also a recent golden cross, was really starting to break out to the upside, but now has fallen back down below this R1 monthly level. The Qs have switched to neutral, and the NASDAQ 100, after coming up to this 38.2% retracement, hitting that level again, has now fallen back. The small caps, recent golden cross, some weakness, started to bounce up in Tuesday's session, but then gave it all back in Wednesday's session. Here's another look at the Russell 2000 small cap index. This support level is still holding up right now. If we fall down below that, that could be much more negative. The RSI on top is starting to turn down and is also below 50, so that's negative. Or the MACD down below was trying to turn back up, but it's still negative overall. The small cap and the elder impulse system remain at neutral. The small cap ratio continues to show weakness compared to the S&P. The mid caps also had a pretty rough day where they closed back below their 200 day moving average. The mid caps for the elder impulse system remain at neutral. Looking at the home builders where the S&P is now declining, the home builders declined, the ratio also declined. We saw a little bit of a decrease in their correlation. We're just keeping an eye on this day in and day out to see if it tells us something. Right now it's not giving us much insight. The copy curve is trying to give us a buy signal. And then the Pring bottom fissure. It hasn't crossed over yet, but it could be getting ready to give us a buy signal. Bond yields continue to decline in Wednesday's session. We're down around the 3.5% level for the 10-year. Bond prices did go up in Wednesday's session. Then looking at our long-term trend analysis, we're still concerned about this. The MACD and the moving average are right on top of each other. What we're trying to see from this chart is when we broke out above this trend line, that looked like things were getting much more positive. And the MACD at that time was also looking a lot stronger. Well, since we've seen some weakness and we're pulling back, even though price remains above this downward sloping trend line, the MACD is starting to roll over. If we fall down below this trend line, that could send the MACD looking more negative and will show that this breakout ended up being a fake out. An update of our possible positive scenarios. Our ratios are still hanging in there. The Qs to the S&P are climbing. We're going pretty much sideways with discretionary to the S&P. Large cap growth is performing better than large cap value. Here's our growth value ratio with the large caps, the mid caps, and the small caps still hanging in there fairly strong. That could be a good positive backdrop. This is a concern. 
we're still below this zero line and gone negative with our 50 period exponential moving average of new highs minus the new lows. We had been coming back above the zero line. Well, in Wednesday's action, we dropped down and we're now negative with this indicator. Two-year treasury after really spiking up has been coming back down. That often will give support to the S&P, but we're just not seeing that yet. And looking at our staples to S&P 500 ratio, we're working off of this tall spike, really came down, started to come back up, and quite often this gives really good support to the S&P, but we're just not seeing that yet. What's our outlook for Thursday? The technicals are turning back negative, especially in the short term. We could recoup that with a strong update, but we need to see follow through with price, and it would also really help to see an increase in volume. On Thursday, we have weekly jobless claims coming out and the fourth quarter current account balance, as well as new home sales. Then the whole list of geopolitical events with the banking situation now really at the forefront. We'll have to see if any of the Fed members come out and say anything. That could give us some Fed speak to latch on to, or if Treasury Secretary Yellen comes out and tries to sing another song about what's going on. Looking at the Stock Traders Almanac statistics for March 23rd, we're pretty negative overall. The Dow's only up 38.1% of the time. The s and is negative at only being up 33 and a third percent of the time. And the NASDAQ's also negative, only being up 42.9% of the time. The rest of this chart just adds more to the positive backdrop. As we're going down, it really doesn't seem all that relevant. Here's the chart showing we're on the 17th trading day of the month in a pre-election cycle we do tend to be up more. What I showed you on the previous chart is the historical numbers. So looking at our scenarios, can't really go with the down one even though we're switching back more to negative because we're not trending right now. We can't go with the up one because our indicators have switched back more to negative and we're not trending. So we're still going with the sideways scenario because the ADX is weakening, it's below 20 and now it's switched back to being negative with the red line on top. Our conclusion, the s and is turning back negative Short term, we're pretty much flat out negative now. Intermediate term, we're still shifting back more to negative. We're long term, we're still positive as long as we're above that 200-day simple moving average. And we had a recent golden cross. Thank you. I hope you found this helpful. I hope you have a very good day. And I will talk to you in the next video.